It's also the case that we can say some things about directions. So here, this thing has a fan. If I turn on the fan, it, the air exerts a force on the cart either that way. Obviously, it's that way. So let's put it that way. And the nice thing about this force, we'll do a fair amount with this carts of this kind, because the nice thing about this force is it's relatively constant. It's it's pretty much a constant force. The cart doesn't get going fast enough that that the that it can't keep up with air resistance and whatnot. So here's a constant force. So this force can speed the cart up. It can slow it down, make it turn around. But can a force in the x direction make the cart turn in the z direction? It's not going to do that, is it? So a force in the direction of momentum can either can can change the magnitude of momentum, or it can actually make the the cart turn around. It can change the sign. But he can't turn it. What do you need to turn something? You need some component of force perpendicular to the momentum. So let's think about possibilities here. Um, so let's think about a different kind of possibility. So future now. OK. So let's say that the momentum of an object is in the plus x direction. And let's say that the net force on the object is in the plus y direction. Now let's think about some possibilities. Could the future momentum be that way? No. Nope. Could it be that way? It could. Could it really? Let's come back to that. Could it be this way? Could it be that way? OK. OK, so we can't, we can't do that. We can't do that. Let's, let's think about this, though, because we know how to add vectors. So let's consider a couple of cases of the momentum now this way, the net force up. OK, so here's the momentum now. And we're going to add to it this vector f net delta t. And so let's draw, let's say it's not a super big impulse. So what's our new momentum going to be? What's the direction of our new momentum going to be? We're adding vectors here, aren't we? So it looks like the future momentum would be like that. OK, what if the, so that's a possible direction. Let's try something else. Here's our momentum now. now let's, let's try an even more dramatic case. Here's our momentum now. Really big impulse. So it looks like the future momentum is going to be like that. Can we really ever get straight? We can't, we can't really do it, can we? Can't get straight up. What we can do is it can be like this or like that, just depending on the magnitudes of those things. But it's going to have both an x component and a y component. We can never get rid of this x component by exerting a force in the y direction. So all that comes from that equation. All these possibilities we can make decisions about simply from that equation. Um, so we'll write down, so F parallel to P changes 
speed, magnitude of P, and F perpendicular to P turns the momentum. Okay, let's see if we can answer a question, a couple questions about this. We have three of these carts. Uh, a is moving to the left at a nearly constant speed. B is moving to the left, gradually speeding up. Uh, C moves to the left, gradually slowing down. Which of the carts, if any, experience a net force to the left? Use this equation. Okay, this is this is this is the principle we're applying here. So these concepts of momentum and force are very physics-y concepts. You have to use physics principles to answer the questions. This is this is not a a guess based on what I think about the way the world works. This is this is what is this what does the momentum principle tell you? Because we're using these physics concepts of force and impulse and momentum here. Okay, 15 seconds. If you're unsure, you should definitely be talking to your neighbor. So a big vote for B or two, which is only B experiences a net force to the left. And that's exactly right. You applied the momentum principle correctly. So we could have made our possibilities, our table this way. We could just talk about the X component of momentum Px now, f net x now. And so cart A, if this, so it's moving to the left, so it'd be minus 10 kilogram meters per second will make up a number. And in the future, it's minus 10 kilogram meters per second. And so therefore, this must have been zero. B started out at negative 10 kilogram meters per second, but it speeded up. So after some time, it was negative 20 kilogram meters per second. And so, well, so right, so this whole thing has to have been negative 10 newton seconds. C started out at negative 10 kilogram meters per second, but it decreased to negative 5. So that wasn't experiencing a net force to the left. So we're reasoning with the equation without numbers. So it's plus 5 newton seconds. Perfect. OK, now this one's a little harder because we don't have as much information. So we're told that an object is moving in the plus x direction. And which of the following statements about the net force acting on the object could be true? OK, you may definitely wish to talk to someone about this one. Wow, you guys are really plugged in. All right, so you say. All of the above, any of them could be true. And that's correct. And the problem is we just weren't given enough information, were we? We just don't have enough information. We can, we can, sh we can make this more precise by rewriting this equation in the following way. We can say that. We can take the momentum principle, and we can say p future minus p now is f net delta t. Well, this is our old friend delta p, isn't it? This is a change in momentum. So this is if this is final and that's initial, we can write this as delta p is f net delta t. The change in momentum over some time delta t is equal to the net impulse. Well, here, no one gave us any information about change. 
Okay? We just didn't have information about whether it was speeding up, slowing down. Delta P was was in, P, P was increasing, decreasing, or staying the same. So we can't draw any conclusions about the net impulse acting on it. Just didn't have enough information. So good for you. All right, one more. It's found to decrease with time. We actually measured it. Uh, and next week we'll actually do some measuring of it. And we found that these are the values. Uh, so we have t equals 0, 1, 2, 3 seconds. These are the values there. What can you conclude about the x component of the net force acting on the object during this interval? So not unanimous. Most people say 2, but there's a minority for 4 and 5. Um, so let's see what we can let's see what we can tell here. Um, so we have time and px. So we have zero, one, two, three, one hundred and twenty, one hundred. 80, 60 kilogram meters per second. So the easy way to think about it is to use this form of the equation. Okay, The change in momentum is equal to the net impulse during some time interval delta t. So let's actually make another column here, delta px. So P final, PX final minus PX initial is going to be negative 20 kilogram meters per second, right? So negative 20 kilogram meters per second. Okay, during this time interval, final minus initial, negative 20 kilogram meters per second. During this time interval, Delta P sub X, negative 20 kilogram meters per second. So it looks like during each of these delta T's, delta P sub X was the same. So we can write that piece of the equation. So we have F net X delta T. If that was the same, delta T was the same. It was always one second. That suggests that the net force was in fact constant during this time. So if the net force was increasing, what would you would have what would you have seen here? Yes, yeah, so these the, the absolute value of these numbers would have gotten bigger, right? So we're going like negative 20, negative 40, negative 60. If it was decreasing, they would have gotten smaller. So the fact that they're the same means net force acting is the same. Questions about that? Okay, one other thing we can get from this form of the equation is, of course, information about directions, which we get from any vector equation. Notice that this tells us that the direction of delta P over some time interval has to be the same as the direction of the net force, because that's a positive, delta T is going to be a positive number. We're, we're running time forwards here. So let's see what an example of what that might mean. Suppose we consider the motion of some object thrown through the air, some projectile. So here's a baseball. And Use a marker that actually works. So here's a baseball traveling through the air. Depending on speed, the, the force that air, the thing called air resistance, the force that air exerts on a moving object, um, actually depends on the speed of the object. So the faster something moves, the bigger the force the air exerts on it. You've felt this riding 
riding a skateboard or a bicycle downhill, you get going fast and you really feel a big air force on you. Um, so therefore, objects don't often a slow-moving object might travel in a perfect parabola, and a fast-moving object won't. Um, but let's consider, uh, here's, here's a baseball at some instant, and here it is at some later instant. We know the direction of its momentum at each instant because it's tangent to the path, right? So it was going, let's say it was... P1 was there, whereas P2 is there, and it's slowing down a lot. So how would we find the direction of the net average net force that was acting on it during that time? Because the net force is changing, isn't it? If the force due to the air is opposite to motion, well, that's changing at all times. And so to get a very good idea of what that force is, we're going to have to take small delta t's. But let's just do a big one just, just to establish the principle. Well, if the direction of the average net force here is the same as direction of delta p, all we need to do is find delta p. So we know how to subtract vectors. Here's p1. There's... P2, delta P is final minus initial, so it's P2 minus P1. So which way does delta P go? Does it go that way or that way? Down. And that suggests that the average net force during this period was in that direction. Now, there's, of course, this delta T issue, so... Scales might be a little different, but <coughs> and that's clearly due to a, a component down due to the Earth and a component that way due to the air, which is varying, so the average isn't isn't great here. <coughs> so that's that's the basic idea. It's there's there's really a lot of information in this equation. We can we can plug numbers into it. That's the easy part. But reasoning through the possibilities and how things are going to behave based on just looking at the equation, thinking about its meaning, is a little less, um, is a little more challenging. And so we're going to spend a lot of time doing that. Uh, often, of course, this is written with the subscript final and initial, but I think it's actually. It's actually important to think of it as the momentum of something in the future, the momentum now. And remember that the whole history of the object is added up there. Yes? Well, to, so the reason I said average is because although the force due to the Earth is pretty much constant when something's close to the Earth, the force due to the air was changing in in magnitude and direction. So at this point, the force due to the air, so we can draw, was that way. Here, the, the force due to the Earth is still the same. But this is moving slower, so the force due to the air is going to be smaller, and it's also going to be in a different direction. So, so we can't really say the force due to the air because it was changing. So what we're saying is if we say, well, we can talk about what it was on average. Okay, This, this component didn't change. That component did. So the best we can do is just kind of talk about an average force, which we can get from this. We want to be more precise. The, the game to play is to shrink delta t. And we take delta t small enough that the speed didn't change very much, and therefore the. So that's a good question. This equation, of course, is one of the others that you need to know. I think that's it for the first test. Um, you should be able to rewrite any of these equations in any of the other forms. So, so you should be able to use both forms of this equation. You should 